What's your secret? Secret? What do you mean? I see the way you and your husband look at each other and your love is real. I don't have that in my relationship, but it certainly is a joy to watch the two of you together. My husband and I, we just look at each other and smile. You see, we co-authored a book, The Marriage Next Door, Ordinary Couples with Extraordinary Relationships. And Perrin Wetzel and myself, Loretta Wetzel, we wrote that book because we have been happily married for most of our 43 years together. That's right, I said 43 years and counting. Not only that, we are business partners together and control multiple businesses. And I am a family entrepreneur authority. My mission in life is twofold to empower 500,000 families to start their own business, create wealth, and begin building legacy. And to have leaders causing leaders using the superpower of integrous influence to make a world the better place. Now, I will tell you this. No marriage is perfect. And you don't hear much in the news about happily married couples. In fact, you may believe that everyone that is married either is eventually going to get divorced or they're simply staying together and sucking up the circumstances, you know, you don't really have a spouse, you have a roommate, and you throw your hands up in the air and you resign because you believe this is just the way it is. Sitcoms will have you believe most conflict resolution is resolved in 30 minutes or less. Celebrity divorces are the norm, and we talk about who's right and who's wrong. In fact, I personally know couples that have been married 20, 25, 30 years. They're now getting divorced. Oh my goodness. What if you have no idea what it is like to have a happy, and healthy relationship in your marriage. You see, here's the problem. The problem is, look all around you. What do you see in your families, in your communities, even in your churches? What do you see in the media? What are the negative thoughts and images that are coming into your brain. You see, divorce is celebrated. And the only solution to conflict resolution is you gotta get a divorce. It must be true, right? Well, let's hold on that for a minute. Now, I want to be very clear to say this. If you are in a relationship where you are being verbally, physically, or emotionally abused, that is not okay. And divorce is an option. Nobody is advocating for you to stay in a harmful relationship. But what if you're being hoodwinked, bamboozled, suckered like a three card Molly shell game because everything you were taught about marital relationships is a lie. 
Well, the truth is statistics show differently. You see, according to the Center for Disease Control, the CDC, from the years 2000 to 21, they tracked marriage and divorce trends. And it turns out there are six marriages for every 1,000 in total population, but there are only 2.5 divorces for every 1,000 total population. That's with 45 states reporting and the District of Columbia. So the truth is there are lots of happily married couples out here. They're all around you, but we don't brag about it because it takes dedication, commitment, and hard work. So I would love to share with you just a few of the secrets that my husband and I, we share for a happy, healthy relationship in longevity. So drum roll, please. Here are the top 10 action steps that you can take to maintain a loving marriage relationship. And these are in no particular order. So tip number 10, learn how to forgive your spouse and your partner. Now, don't expect your partner to be perfect. You might have thought that when you were dating and you were able to stay on the phone for four hours straight and not miss a beat, but nobody's perfect. And forgiveness is the key for resolving conflict, not divorce. Forgiveness is twofold for your spouse or partner to give them that space to heal so that they know that they can be authentic and you're not holding ju uh, judgments or grudges against them. But it's also for yourself, for peace of mind and peace in your heart. Forgiveness is key. You know, I'm mama soul wisdom and I love this to your old school wisdom for a new generation. So here's some old school wisdom. Resentment is like taking poison and expecting the other person to die. Don't do it. Instead, it's easier to forgive. Tip number nine, love unconditionally with boundaries. Love should be given freely without any strings attached. And you gotta be able to make room for differences. So I gotta tell you, my husband and I, our taste in movies, we both love action flicks, but when it comes to horror movies, I can't do it. I've tried, I've tried. I go to bed, I have nightmares at night. I don't like horror movies and he does. So I said, okay, go with your sister. It's fine, I'm okay. Me on the other hand, if it's a tearjerker, a love story, hey, I go with my girlfriends. But we make room for differences. It's the same with he has a golf trip with his buddies and he goes off and they have fun. And then I have a week with the spa at my girlfriends. It works out. You gotta make room for differences. Tip number eight, pray together before you leave the house every single day. Whoever your higher power is, I say God, you may say universal power, but pray together because there's a sobering thought. One day, one of us is not coming home. So here's what we do. We stand, we face each other, and we hold hands, and we say the Lord's Prayer. And then 
we add some declarative statements after that. Something along the, li the lines of, I love life and life loves me. We are enough. You are my friend. And for all my Trekkies out there, we also say, live long and prosper. The next tip, tip number seven, have regular date nights. That's important. Quality time through real conversations. Now, what do I mean by real conversations? Not the checklist conversations. Did you pick up the kids from gymnastics? What time you got to pick the dog up from the groomer? Oh my goodness. Did you go to the grocery store? No. Those are checklist conversations. I'm speaking of real conversations. What's the one highlight of your day? What's one thing you wish you could have done differently? What is something that you did today that you are most proud of? Having a real conversation. And this is key. These conversations must be done without the number one addiction in America. Your mobile phone. I can't believe the number of times I've gone into a restaurant and I see an entire family, mom, dad, and three kids. And rather than having conversations with each other, each and every one, they have their heads in their cell phone, checking their apps, and not speaking to one another. All right. You want to play. Have fun with your spouse or your partner. Play games. Now, today's generation, they usually do video games. My son and his girlfriend, they like to play those video games together. But there are also other games. You have board games like Monopoly, Connect Four. You have card games, all different types of games. And it promotes bonding and healthy competition. By the way, did you realize that when you have fun, it opens up your listening. So have fun with your spouse so that you can better listen to one another. Now, I gotta tell you about our first date. You see, our first date was a chess match. Can you believe that? Now, here's some background. I grew up as a kid, myself and three older siblings, but my father worked two jobs. So my time with my dad was Sunday afternoon and we would play chess every single afternoon. So I've been playing for a long time and most of the competition I was able to beat. So when my then boyfriend said, do you play chess? I'm like, yeah, I play chess. He said, well, do you want to play? I'm like, sure, come on over. So he comes over and I go, okay, which pawn, which color, white or black? He says, oh, no, no, I'm going to be a gentleman. I'll let you go first because white always goes first. I'm like, okay. We're playing chess, and mind you, it wasn't a blowout, but in fact, he beat me in about 90 minutes, and I was not a happy camper. Now, his friends would tell him, man, you should have let her win. I said, you know what? This one has some juice in them, some competition in them. I think I might keep him around. But on a different note, I consistently beat him in backgammon today. So we're even. 
All right, next tip, number five. Smile. Smile in the morning when you wake up and you see your spouse. Small gestures of love and affection, they go a long, long way. Flirt with each other, including initiating sex. By the way, if you've been in a marriage for 10 years and you haven't had sex in three, the last three years, note to self, that might be a problem, okay? Buy flowers, candies, trinkets, whatever that makes your spouse happy. In fact, become familiar with the five love languages by Chapman. Because I can tell you mine is definitely spend quality time with me and I love you to the moon and back. My husband's love language is physical touch. In fact, even today, we still hold hands walking down the street because that's just what he loves. The other ones are acts of service, receiving gifts, and words of affirmation. So use the five love languages and that's going to help guide you to what your spouse really enjoys. Tip number four. When you are upset with your spouse or your partner, your inner voice needs to be kind, not a bully. If your inner voice is a jerk, your own negative self-talk is condescending, judgment, intolerant, what kind of relationship do you think you're going to have with your spouse or your partner? it does spill over. Now, this does not mean mistake kindness for weakness. Nobody is asking you to be a doormat. But this does mean leaving a person whole with your language. Words that you use that will help them to admit that they've had made a mistake and for them to be authentic with you. You know, they learn from their mistakes and believe it or not, you do too, because you each accept responsibility. Keep your words soft and sweet. You may have to eat them one day. Remember, there are three sides to every story. Your story, your partner's story, and the truth is usually somewhere in the middle. Tip number three. Keep your relationship between each other private. Respect the privacy of that relationship. Keep your family and friends out and do not overshare sensitive information. Or the cleanup woman might be around. If you don't know who that is, if you're constantly telling your girlfriend, girl, do you know what he did? I can't stand that. That is bad. Oh my goodness. I think he's just the worst husband in the world. And your girlfriend is agreeing with you. Uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah, girl, he's bad. You probably should leave him. The next thing you'll know, that same girlfriend has hooked up with your husband. Beware of the cleanup woman, all right? And if nothing else, seek coaching from trained professionals if you run into bumps in the road. Tip number two. Forgive yourself because everyone makes mistakes. You are human. So learn not only from your mistakes, but also learn from other people's mistakes. Welcome to New York, right? Welcome to New York. Shall I start with tip number two? Tip number two. 
forgive yourself. Everyone makes mistakes. Learn from your own mistakes and other people's mistakes as well because you are human. Here's the real question. What are you committed to? Are you committed to having a perfect marriage? And we all know there's no such thing as a perfect marriage. Or are you committed to doing whatever it takes to make it work? Now, you want that relationship to work. So that requires communication. I have a communication model called LAVA. LAVA stands for listen, acknowledge, validate, and then ask questions. So let's start with listen first, shall we? Listening is critical, and I learned this from Sean Callagy, something called level five listening. So when you're at zero, you are completely ignoring your partner and you're changing the subject. So you might be walking along in Central Park and your partner notices, oh, wow. It's a beautiful blue sky. And isn't Central Park gorgeous? And then your partner turns to you and say, I decided I like strawberry ice cream instead of chocolate. And you're like, what? What? That's a disconnect. That's at zero. Then the next level, level one, is the Me Too strategy. You know the Me Too. Sometimes I have to refrain myself from saying me too. So my girlfriend says, I went to the Beyonce concert and it was the best time. She was awesome and amazing. And then you say, me too. I went to the Taylor Swift concert and it was great. Well, you didn't even take the time to find out what was so amazing about the Beyonce concert. And I'm sure both of them are superstars in their own right and they each have their own unique skills. But beware of the me too, because you're drawing attention to yourself rather than listening to the other person. Then the next level is probably once a cracker. Parroting. You don't want to parrot. It. It's better than the other two, but that's when you repeat exactly what the other person is saying. Next is inferential. So in inferential listening, you're also listening to the words and the emotion underneath the words. And then at level five listening, it includes it all. Your verbals, your nonverbals, your vocal qualities, your body language, everything associated with that. And at level five listening, your partner knows that you are truly in tune to what they're saying. So that's L, listening or level five listening. Now, what about A for acknowledgement? If someone shares something with you and then you don't acknowledge what they said because you're busy on your phone or you're distracted and you're really not paying attention, how does that make that other person feel? People want to be seen heard and understood. Do you really get me? So acknowledgement is key. Now the V is for validation. A person may share their opinion about something 
you must validate what they have shared. That is different from agreeing because you may not necessarily agree with their opinion, but at least they know by you validating that you've taken the time to listen and at least attempt to walk in the other person's shoes. And then the A is for ask. Ask powerful questions. You see, powerful people ask powerful questions. Questions steer focus, and you only get in life what you focus on. So ask great questions. It will lead to a wonderful, stimulating conversation between you and your partner or spouse. Here's tip number one, love yourself first. And that's my tagline because I truly believe you can't give what you don't have. It's just like a car. If that tank is running empty on gas or you have an electric car and it's out of electricity, you gotta pause. You gotta stop at that charging station and let that car charge up, or you gotta find a gas station and put fuel in the tank. Well, when it comes to human beings, our self-care requires us to put fuel in our tank. Physically, mentally, emotionally. It's no different. Plus, I wanna let you know, half plus half doesn't equal a whole. Some people think, well, I'm lacking in these areas and he's lacking in these areas. So together a half plus a half equals one whole. It doesn't work like that. You must be whole and complete before you enter into that relationship with that other person. There's always room for growth. There's always room for choosing differently, but enter into that relationship, not depending on someone else to fulfill your deficiencies. Now, when I say love yourself first, I also mean avoid hopping in and out of bad relationships, simply because you don't want to feel lonely and you don't want to be alone. It doesn't work. Feel good about yourself and then be open to the possibility of finding that special someone in your life. Well, there you have, ladies and gentlemen, the top 10 action steps to maintain a loving relationship with your spouse or partner. Remember, all relationships require effort, patience, and hard work. And it requires love. It is essential to communicate openly and honestly and regularly to ensure that healthy relationship. Remember, to always get to truth. When you get to truth, and sometimes truth has a little bit of pain associated with it, you know why? Because you're hiding the truth. So don't hide. Get to the truth with velocity. And the sooner you do that, it's the likelihood you will come out on the other side being a stronger couple together. Now we did it for 43 years and counting. So whether it's 43 or four, it's possible for you. Remember, true love is real. Mm -hmm.